Oh, I've, I think I've always wanted to be an artist. Um, I was the, I'm the oldest in my family, so naturally my mom saved everything, including some school books in grade one. What do you want to be when you grow up? An artist, an artist, an artist. Um, I always thought I wanted to be a drawer, but the very first time I touched a, paint a paintbrush to a, a canvas, it just felt right. And ever since then, drawing has always been a, a sketch or a rough copy for me. I've not been able to treat it as a finished thing in my head, just, you know, paint just felt right. Your, your style and technique, how did that all come about? Um, I was in my last year at OCAD um, art school and it was very um, academic and we were, everything was being very thought out and I would argue being overthought. And it just, I was kind of losing that sense of fun and joy as it became art and service to an essay or a concept. And I had one piece that I was the most excited for a piece I'd ever been. And I was at the halfway point and I loved it and I finished it and it completely ruined it. So I was so upset I started it again. And then when I got to the halfway point, I just left it. And there seemed like an excitement or an energy there that wasn't in my more finished work. So that was the starting place. And I developed that look into my technique. And then over time, I would try to focus on different aspects and pulling it in different directions, refining different things. Um, I did notice when I first started, I would usually put on some way too loud music and just sort of paint and move and have fun with it. And over time, I've transitioned to audiobooks, so it's a much more slow-paced, uh, deliberate process now. Um, my most recent body of work was more of a return to that energetic, joyful you know, moving and painting and being expressive. How was your experience with OCAD? I did, I loved going to OCAD and the professors I had and the students were all amazing. So I don't want to make it sound like it's a negative experience, um, but there was, uh, one viewer, it was a, an older man who was looking at all the work and he just stopped in front of my stuff and this big smile got on his face and he leaned over and he said, everyone else feels like their art is a footnote to an essay. You look like the only person who just loves painting and had fun making this. And I'm like, I did have fun making that. So I almost feel like there's, there's types of um, wordless knowledge that you can just experience or through motion or through looking or through sound that are hard to convey in words. And I almost feel like something is lost when we try to communicate art only through words. So how are you adjusting with uh, the creative process? Well, one, um, I'm doing some sketches and um, digital sketches and color swatches and stuff like that. So I haven't actually gotten into the painting process yet. Um, for the sketching process, a big part of my process has always been going out you know, with my camera, walking around, taking tons of pictures, getting an overall feeling, and then trying to translate into that into an image. Uh, these days, it seems maybe a little irresponsible to be spending time outside if I don't have to. So I'm spending more time scouring the internet looking. I'm considering looking up hashtags of what people are imagining, seeing what people are posting and what they're missing. And I'm considering incorporating that into my next show, but I haven't got all the conceptual stuff fully nailed down yet, so I'm not 100% uh, sure which direction it's going to take. So I'm at the uh, curious, exciting part right now. So oh, fantastic! When do you know it's finished? That's, yeah, that's the biggest problem I struggle with too. Um, I'm always overpainting things and taking things too far. Uh, so what I've started doing lately is when I think a painting is about 90% done or 95% done, I'll take it out of the studio and hang it on the wall in my living room. 
and then over the next month or two, I'll look at it and there'll probably be one or two things that really bug me and I'll know to go in and fix that. Or after a month, I might realize that was done and then I'll just leave it. So that's been, that's been my trick is just getting it out of the studio, put it on a wall, give it time, give it space. I think the, another good learning thing is um, all summer in my head, I would imagine what I would paint for the next school year or even on the bus because I was I spent a lot of time in transit. So I'd be doing sketches in my notes and then later trying to translate it, you know, on a larger scale. And I just find that when you're imagining or sketching things, it doesn't always translate to the big picture the way you'd expect it to. And it can be a little bit of a trap like you might feel stuck in a rut so i've learned the best thing to do is just get a big canvas and get in there and get painting and just just do it how did you get representation with the gallery and how did you meet yeah i um i it i think i was making a go of it for nearly a decade um before i before i lined up with ron um and I've talked to a lot of other artists who've been pretty successful and the details are always different, but the one aspect that's always the same is they worked really hard for a really long time and then they got a lucky break that they were ready for. And that's, that's the thing. Um, I worked hard, I showed at a lot of galleries. Um, my lucky break was Moore Gallery was hosting a group show many years ago and the curator didn't want it to be overly conceptual. He just, I, the, to, the story he told me was that he went onto Google and just typed cool effing art, hit enter, did an image search, and mine was among the ones that came up. And then he just spent time narrowing them down into his favorite 12, and I was lucky enough to be among those. The show, the show was being curated by Michael Adamson. He was the artist um, curating the show. But I'd actually had met Ron um, before that. While I was going to OCAD, every Wednesday I would go on a gallery tour up uh, Queen West, and then I'd go up Spadina and see that, see all those galleries. So it, I'd been going to the gallery for over 10 years before I got signed up. Uh, even high school field trips, uh, that would be one of the galleries we'd always hit as uh, one of the big top tier galleries. So oh. it, uh, it was pretty exciting to be you know, represented by them. So the lifestyle of the artist, how do you manage with that, the, the uh, feast and famine? Well, part of it is just being, um, being very financially disciplined, um, knowing how, okay, how, you know, how much time do I have? How much buffer room? What are my materials going to cost? Um, what's, what's realistic? What, what can I do? So there's a lot of real life stuff that's involved in that. Um, there are, there are tricks you pick up along the way too, like sometimes, um, you know, just where to get your stuff framed, this shop versus that shop, you know, finding so a custom person to do it for you and things like that, uh, different materials that work better. It's just, there's little, little things you pick up along the way. Are you the the messy type or are you meticulous and clean and extremely the messy type I'm uh, I guess kind of like Picasso if I'm in a room that's all just bare white wall then don't really know what to do with myself but if there's junk everywhere I might just see two things piled on each other and I'm like oh that's a weird random connection and it's inspiring If I have to put on boots and a jacket and go outside, I'm less likely to do it. If it's a third bedroom that's just around the corner, it's, you know, enough separation from the rest of life, but it's still close enough that I don't have to think about entering the studio. And I find my, my best painting happens late at night, so I usually try to spend the first few hours doing other studio stuff, um, stretching, sizing, gessoing, getting things ready. Um, usually it's after dinner that I find my best painting happens.
another, that's, this is another one of those things that I think influenced my art making style was getting into photography. Um, I find if I sit down to draw or paint something, my compositions and my colors and the forms and angles will end up being very different than if I photograph it. There's certain minimalist compositions that are incredible as a photograph, but no painter would ever dream of painting that scene. And I found that the more I got into photography and looked at things photographically, um, when I applied that to a, a painting, I would just have different angles, different color harmonies, different combinations of shapes that I just found more exciting. Whereas if it's all me intuiting it, making it up in my head, it just ends up feeling more predictable. So um, yeah, I've really learned to sort of throw myself into another discipline. Um, you know, it's the more effort I put into photography, it seems like the better my painting gets. are you staying safe and what does isolation mean to you? Uh, isolation for me has been um, actually not that big of a change. Uh, I was planning to take a bunch of time off and just spend it in the studio working and not get out much so that part hasn't changed but what has changed is just the knowledge that I can't go for my daily walks as easily. I can't just pop in to pick something up that I'm missing. It's really it's really strange, like you don't, you take so much for granted, where now it's like, oh, I'm out of this particular color, I might have to adjust things, or I might have to change the image or put it aside for, you know, for now and move on. 